Uh, I can already imagine all the clients telling you like, can we change the word, you know, to like a whole oh, different word? I've had it's it. Like, I've had it. Oh. It's, it's horrible. It's the worst. For you. It's, it's a sickening feeling. And it's just yeah. like, oh, I've, I've spent like half a day doing that, that sort of word animation. And they think it's just a, just type and replace. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today I'm here with Matt Voice, a talented motion designer from the UK. And if you're on the YouTube, make sure to like, comment, subscribe on the audio, rate and review, get us up there on the charts. So let's get right into it. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. I've just been kind of trying to get all my projects and other endeavors organized lately. I've been trying to get a little bit better at organizing my calendar too it's been a mess <laughs> yeah um, i'm terrible at it no matter how much i try I, I can't say no to anything and it's just like yes i'll do that 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 and then it's just like oh yeah there's no time <laughs> it's like i thought as i've gotten like better or maybe like better clients or better projects i'd feel more comfortable like saying no but i still feel like it could all just be like taken away one day so i have to say <laughs> yes to every know, single yeah. thing yeah the guilt you feel real guilty about saying no yeah, it, like, in, you know, I've sometimes I have where a project proposal comes in and I know it's way below like the price I should be doing it for and I tell them and then they're not interested in the set price and then I, I start to think like, well, let's see what we could do, you know, like maybe I could <laughs> help you out even though yeah. I know that'll end up probably being not a good idea. I know, I know, but you, you got to do it. It's sometimes worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I've found that if it's like someone I know or someone that like the project's really cool, I can kind of, there's a lot more wiggle room with something that's boring, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, what kind of stuff have you been working on lately? Uh, so I've been doing just loads of like animated type for quite a few different brands. Um, and it's been kind of crazy. There's been like three weeks where it's just been kind of deadline after deadline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, jumping on like different styles and different things and trying to work out, you know, just get organized, which I always kind of find difficult, just trying to decide what to do first. So it's been good. It's been good. Loads of like animated stickers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, did some things for Lacoste recently for the Olympics, which was quite cool. Um, yeah, it's dope. Yeah, so it's been good. It's been been busy, which is always good. Yeah, I, I found like, I feel like every style you see, like especially a lot of these big, uh, I know you've worked with a lot of big like, corporate huge mm. companies it seems like they're all just want that like animated gif typography that you do yeah. it seems to be like very very popular whether it's you doing it or pe people using you as the inspiration or whatever yeah i feel like sometimes i feel like it's got like a, an end date to it like people are just going to be like yeah that's enough let's stop but like the the, the projects keep coming in and mm -hmm. you know on, on some of these for these like bigger clients like i propose different styles and i send mm -hmm. them you know, a deck with different styles in, but they always gravitate to that same sort of style. And it's like, okay, I'll do it one more time. And then maybe the next client will choose something different, but they never do. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like even if it does have an end date, I feel like that may be more of an end date of that style, like, you know, in general. But I feel like since you're kind of like very recognized for it and I would consider you like, not like you didn't obviously like invent like this. No, like, no typography like motion design but you've gotten very known for this look so i feel like even if the trend died down like you could continue to do it still you know yeah hopefully that, that would be nice to still be able <laughs> to just be specialized but i still want to like explore new stuff it's just hard yeah you know it's like you you kind of do it to yourself you know you want to become like known for something and you want to find a niche that way you can get all this work but then once you find that it's easy to get bored of doing like similar things all the time yeah I, I always said I didn't have like a personal style or I didn't want to have a personal style and it's kind of changed a little bit so I'm just trying to find new styles and, and keep it fresh keep it keep it new keep it current yeah and I'm sure it can get kind of scary if like you try some other stuff and like it may not work at first and you're like oh shit maybe I should go back to the, to the other <laughs> yeah. thing yeah just stick to what I'm good at and stay there yeah what um what kind of originally got you so interested in like this type of design and like typography specifically so i um i started off doing like static type posts mm -hmm. um 
I just got into creating, you know, like different kind of styled lettering. And right. um, I think I had to do it for a, a project at one of my first jobs. And I really enjoyed like just exploring, you know, fonts and trying to sort of customize them and, and get them looking different. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I started doing like loads of static type posts. And that's kind of what I used to do on Instagram. It was just post after post, different, you know, phrases or words. It's kind of like what I do now, but yeah. nothing, had, nothing had any emotion. Um, and then uh, again, I moved to a few different agencies and I started learning a bit more about motion and doing more motion graphics. And then I started to slowly try and add that to my work, add that to my letters. And yeah, I don't know, it just kind of, things just started working and it just started clicking because I was trying, I tried a few different, you know, tutorials and things out there, but because I already knew from agency work how to animate characters yeah. and, and different things, I then applied that knowledge to letter forms and to like shape layers. Whereas um, I found other people I've spoken to have just, they've just tried to apply what's out there for kinetic type at the minute, like what tutorials are available mm -hmm. just for type. Whereas I tell people to, to try and look at different courses for like character rigging or, you know, anything that's not type and then say you can apply that to lettering. And that's kind of where m all of my stuff came from, that different kind of take on animation and trying to trying to build my style into it which was it was it was a long process but you know it's kind of kind of worked out now yeah definitely and I, I feel like that's a good point like you're kind of looking at it at more as you know the each letter has its own like shape rather than just looking up things that you can do with like text or or typography yeah. i feel like i've noticed that with a lot of your stuff that has like um I would call it like maybe like it's like it looks more organic, you know, in the way that the things move and bounce. And it reminds me of like some of the, you know, tutorials you'll see on just like moving like balls, you know, or spheres or yeah, like yeah. when like things have like um, when some when a character will like bend their knees and hit the ground, you kind of apply that to like the different letter forms. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of something else that people have started to come to me for because they've my work's been called that loads of times, like really organic and full of character because I do try and give the letters like like overshooting like you say when things are bouncing and they continue to bounce yeah. like that kind of stuff just it just helps it just it gives it more than just a jump or a bounce it just gives it more life and more character a bit more fun as well yeah and it's like it's one of those things where you don't you don't know why it looks natural until you realize like a lot of things aren't natural and they don't really exist in the world that <laughs> yeah. we see in animation. It's yeah. like the same reason why I try to never use like 100% black because it's like kind of foreign to what you, you would see in nature. I'll try to yeah, like yeah. reduce it by just a little bit, you know? Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice way to go about it, definitely. Yeah. So before you were kind of doing a lot of the animating and stuff, would you say that um, like when you start introducing the motion design, that was like a big shift in like your, I guess, like trajectory and like the amount of clients you were getting and stuff. Yeah. Cause I used to, I used to hate motion design. I did it at university. Um, and I, I hated it. I just couldn't get to grips with it. It was, it seemed like it was too much of a whole new thing to learn when I already knew mm -hmm. sort of general graphic design and illustration. And I was just, I just kind of wrote it off straight away. I was just like, oh, I don't really want to get into this. And then as I got pushed into different agency roles and I had to use motion, motion more, yeah. then, yeah, it, it's weird. It, it just became something that um, I really fell into. I never thought in a million years I'd be like a motion designer or I was just wanting to be like a graphic designer or like an mm -hmm. illustrator. And then, yeah, this, this kind of, you know, this wave of, of style started to hit me and creating all these new things. I was, I was trying to create things daily um especially during lockdown which is where a lot of the co kind of animated yeah. stickers and things really came from it was just like i finish work i've got like another 40 minutes let's just see if i can whip something up quickly and then it just became like a, a journal like a constant thing and i was just like doing it every day which mm -hmm. is great practice and that really helped and then and then yeah this i just i, I can't believe now that i am like a freelance kind of motion and type yeah. designer like I never, I never thought it was going to be motion at all. I thought maybe I'll be like an art director at an agency or, you know, a design director eventually in a few years. And yeah, then, yeah, it's now, it's just like motion every day after effects. And it's just like, I used to hate this program. Now it's just like, yep, straight away. Load yeah. That 
Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. I always wonder, like, because obviously you spoke about being in like lockdown and some of the effects that had on it. Uh, for me, it was it also pushed me to like get into you know this YouTube space, the podcast. Uh, pretty much helped me transition to like full freelance, and I always yeah. think the same way about it. Is like if that stuff didn't happen, I wonder if like without COVID, if the trajectory if that would have happened organically anyway, or I would have yeah, yeah. probably still been out of office or something. You know, I know you never know. You never know how things how things could have been. It's weird. Just have to do one or two tutorials, and then before you know it, you everything you like about that design it kind of sends you on that path and yeah the trajectory is just like it's nuts you just never yeah. know you never know so when you were doing like your type stuff and you said the early motion stuff you did like in at university and stuff they didn't really have they weren't really connected right you were just kind of doing them separately and yeah yeah it was like um when i did it at uni it was like i did mm -hmm. a um a mobile app for oh yeah um kind of like uh what was it it was like combining different cinemas here in england like cinema brands and oh, okay. it was like an app that had all these cinemas in and you could sort of cross -re cross reference like ticket times and things like that but then for that project i did um an animated video like an explainer video mm -hmm. and that's kind of where i really got into it but now I, if i looked back and opened that file it, it would be horrendous because that's when i first knew the program it'd be such yeah. a mess it'd be awful um so yeah, it was just kind of like, that was like the first taste of it, but I never thought about applying it to typography until I, I can't remember what set it off. I think I did in one of my jobs when I was leaving, um, when I'd been learning sort of motion graphics at this agency mm -hmm. to, to advertise my role, we did like an animated post, which was like now hiring a graphic designer and it had oh, okay. this, this stretching kinetic type. And I think that that moment of being like, you know, I can apply this motion style to lettering and typography kind of kicked off the next sort of phase of my like whole career really, because then the next agency I got into and they knew I'd done some sort of basic animation and they were interested in typography and lettering. And mm -hmm. again, yeah, that sort of combination just like kickstarted it. And then when I combined that doing it in the day job with doing it at home, it was like an extra boost. So it just like skyrocketed and it just became like, first form i went straight into type and after effects and illustrator combining them and yeah it's it's just yeah it's just one of those things you never think of and it just like gels together when you get the hang of it yeah it's it's weird how that that stuff works out and, and you're you're mentioning like your early files I, i'm not very experienced with motion and i want to get a little bit more into it but mm -hmm. there's things where i feel like with timelines and stuff like i've figured some stuff out for projects but i don't think i could go back in and, and like do it oh, again you know it's hard to no. remember the workflow yeah yeah that's the thing i think you have to you have to get into it on like a daily or even like you know every two days just keep mm -hmm. keep fresh with it and keep keep on top of it because you can get so easily lost you'll just be because you can't really group things on After Effects on the timeline. So it's just right. like hundreds and hundreds of layers. You can hide things, but like, oh, you can just have so many layers. And you, you see some of these these animations, these guys doing like 2D, these character rigs and these whole sort of films. And you just, you can't imagine like how many like pre-comps and layers and yeah. the organization is just like a whole nother level. Like, you need like a whole nother monitor just for the <laughs> yeah. timeline, the yeah, layers yeah. and everything. If only, if only. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, it's it's like, I think that's how everything is though. You know, I'm sure when I first started, I, it's hard to remember like early Photoshop and Illustrator, but I'm sure I felt the same way. Like I'll never be able to group all this or figure out these layer, like the blending right. modes. I had no idea right when I started. Yeah, I was the same. I was the same. And ev everything, that kind of stuff I learned through agency and it's mm -hmm. all, it's all helped, you know, help me apply it to projects and work that I do for clients now, which has been great. Yeah, and I feel like also um, like with a little bit back with your typography stuff with with lockdown, it seems like there was a lot of good you know subject matter during that time for like cool little taglines and just like relatable things, and I'm sure that helped with people sharing your work and getting it out there because it was like you're making light and like kind of having fun with stuff that was everyone was like not having fun, so it's like cool to see <laughs> fun like bouncy letters every once in a while, you know. Yeah, I do. Th I do think it helps, and I do, you know, like you mentioned, wonder if, if I hadn't been for lockdown, then would I have, I wouldn't have spent half amount of time doing these these kind of stickers and these these sort right. of practices. So 
again, it's it is kind of like yeah, if if that hadn't happened, then I don't know if I would be where I am today. But yeah, yeah, it it was great because everybody was on their phones as well. It was kind of like you know you didn't have you had no escape, so mm-hmm. it was like if I can make a load of stickers and animations that people can actually see and share, then it was just like great. Even if on Instagram they don't know who's done the sticker on the gift search. It's just like a sticker. It's still great. And, you know, you get people send, saying, you know, sending you messages like, is this your sticker and things like that. So it was great. It was kind of like fuel to the fire. And yeah. it was, it needed like positivity. Like, like you say, it needed a bit of fun and people needed nice things on their timeline. So it was just like, I enjoy making it. And if people enjoy seeing it, I'll just keep, keep going, keep pushing it, yeah. keep pushing it. When did you get into doing like, so I know you said when you started doing like motion kind of design and kinetic type, mm. but how how long after that did you start really getting into like the GIFs and the stickers specifically? So I I started doing them, I think when I worked out how to do them, it was it was kind of like there's not any tutorials out there, well there mm. wasn't at the time as to how how to do it, even how to set up a Giphy account, how to upload your stickers and um I, f- I just found it out th- like through a few different ways and it just kind of worked. So I did some, um, I did some random ones for like Christmas two years ago. Yeah. And it was, I called it like the 12 days of Gifmas and it was just like <laughs> yeah. trying to create cool stickers for Christmas, like really stupid stuff um, that I thought people might use because I think I would use them or like my wife would use them at the time. So yeah. it's like, that's, that's the perfect, like that's the perfect line or tagline or character. Um, so then, yeah, I bashed out like these 12 stickers, um, uploaded them to Giphy, put them on Instagram. And then I kind of just forgot about them over Christmas. I wasn't really focusing on it. It was just like, uh, I'll chuck them up. And if anything happens, that's that's great. And if it doesn't, yeah. you know, it's no skin off my back. So um, I chucked them up and then it came to like second week in January. And I thought, oh, I forgot about those stickers. So I went on Giphy mm-hmm. and had a look and they had like millions and millions of views. And it's it was crazy. just like, yeah, it was just like, there's definitely something in this mm-hmm. and uh, I, I tried a few more and they just kept, they kept trending and, you know, it was great to see my work on GIF straight away. There it was. Um, the views wasn't really sort of a pinnacle point because you don't get paid per view. There's no incentive behind the views because unless someone specifically knows it's your style or it's your sticker, then they don't know, you know, there's no right. name attached to it on Giphy unless you search for an artist's name, then maybe you can see what they've created. So there was no like sort of repercussions of like, oh, hopefully these people know that I've done it. It was just like, mm-hmm. oh man, these these things are trending. Let's just keep pushing them. So that's yeah. when it kind of fed into lockdown eventually because I just kept doing them daily. And every time I did like a, a an Instagram post on like some random type, I'd make sure it was a sticker as well. So it kind of came mm. like hand in hand. So it was great, but it, it it never I never thought it was going to do anything or lead anywhere it's just some random stickers and if someone uses them they use them and it just like exploded it was great yeah and I feel like the fact that there's no account or like really way to search for you that it kind of speaks more to like the quality of the actual designs because they could be from anyone and so someone's not just liking it because they already know you or whatever like they're actually like this is the best Christmas sticker I could use you know out of all (laughs) of them yeah, it, it is. It's, it's it's nuts. I don't know. I still don't to this day understand how some of these things trend. You know, mm-hmm. is it is it one person uses it and someone else sees it on the story, so they use right. it. I just, do you know what I mean? There's no like clear yeah, no idea. sort of way. Yeah, it, I don't know. They just they just trend. <laughs> mm-hmm. They just go. So it's just like it's great. And yeah, I remember reading about, I think it was an article about you or like some kind of list thing when I was uh, doing some research online and it said you were like one of the top five, like Giphy, like creators or something like that. Yeah. in in, in 2020, I was like one of the top five GIF, GIF channels on Giphy for like artists, which was nuts yeah. because there's a few people on there that have been making them for years, you know, way before I've even came on the scene. You know, they've got like 20, 30, 40 mi- billion views which is insane um and you know some of those people are in the top they were in the top five but then there was a couple of us that were in in there as well kind of like sort of like underdogs who had just taken Mm -hmm. it up recently and you know it it just all kind of came together and it was just like no way how how the hell have i you know become one of the top five when there's all these different artists out there um so it was great to do it at the time because now 
you know, it's, 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 it feels super competitive because yeah. it's a lot harder to trend and people really sort of picked up on it. And in the last year, it's, it feels like it's changed completely. Yeah, I think that's how everything is when you're kind of like an early adopter. Mm -hmm. You have the risk of like, you know, I don't even know if this will even matter or work, but you also have the advantage of like, if you can start doing well in this, you're, you're ahead of everyone. They're going to start after they see yeah, you already yeah. put it, you already put in all the work and then they see like, oh, I should try this. So you're already way ahead. Exactly. Yeah, it was good. But yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely changed recently. A lot of people are doing it now, which is great. It's great for people to explore in it. It's just, uh, it's harder to trend. I found. Yeah. Really is that, did that help you? Do you think, um, like, do you think the bigger companies you've worked with, like Facebook and things like that, where you're creating them, their own mm. uh, stickers and gifts, um, did that start happening after yours started like trending a lot more? They saw them yeah. and they wanted them of their own? Yeah, yeah. So I, like I said, I was uploading in lockdown and I was building up the views and then um, Giphy contacted me because I caught their eye. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got the first project with them, which was doing like these sort of location stickers with little icons for different cities around the world and different countries. Um, so that was great straight off the bat. That was like a first sticker commission. So it, again, yeah. it was, you know, fuel in that sort of idea and passion that it's, it's definitely something that can make money. Um, and if Giphy wants it, then maybe the clients will want it. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't at the time, I wasn't pushing it. I wasn't like going out there looking for work. I was just, I did the Giphy job and then I kept doing my own stickers and kept uploading, uploading. Um, and then it just started to catch the eye of other agencies. And that's when, you know, I, w I worked with like agencies in LA called Watson Design Group. And that's when mm. they said, you know, we've got this Disney Plus brief. And it was just like, holy shit, that's insane. How, yeah. the, why the hell do you want me to do these stickers for Disney Plus? Um, and then, yeah, it's just kind of gone from there. Just like client after client. It's, it, it tends to be a lot of agencies. Like there's a few brands that have reached out to me to do stickers directly, but mm -hmm. I think, I think like the agencies are where they have these ideas and they see like, this is a good place for our client to, you know, gain some traction or get some views. So, um, that's why I think a lot of agencies have kind of come to me with their clients and yeah. we've done it from there. It's kind of, kind of been that way around, I think. So a lot of the, um, projects that I've seen you post for like Facebook and Disney, you're working like, uh, the agency's working with them and they're hiring you, right? As like a freelancer. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of like. 75%, 25%, like 75% agency, then right. the rarity, like Lacoste or Facebook, that was directly with directly with them. That's um, cool. So it's, yeah, it kind of balances out. It's good. Yeah, I've, I've worked with a few like big legacy brands or whatever like that because I was uh, brought on as a freelancer to an agency and even yeah. that was crazy, but I can't imagine like, you know, it must feel even like more wild when you get approached directly, like right from, you know, Facebook or Apple or whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it is nuts. And you can imagine it's, it's hard enough when it's an agency because you're, you're kind of at the pearl or opposite end to the brand yeah. because for some of these projects, there was the, like for, um, for Disney, there was the people in Disney and the different sects in Disney, like people mm -hmm. in the Star Wars sector, people in like the classic cartoons. Um, so they had to sign things off and then that came back to the agency and they might have to sign things off that I sent to them. Mm -hmm. So there was like layers and layers and layers of different people to view it and approve it and sign it off. So you can see how some of these things with agencies can be tricky. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it's the same with, with some brands. It just removes another level of amends and, you know, and conversations with art directors and whatnot. Um, but I've, I've, I've had a few like sort of brand jobs where it has been like, they have to be sent out to like different levels of, you know, yeah, art gets, directors and crazy. design directors. <laughs> yeah. It just goes up and up and up and then it all feeds down and people get ignored and it's mm -hmm. just like, which amends am I doing? It's, it can be quite tricky. Yeah. And especially uh, when I used to work at this agency that did, um, I've, I kind of spoke about this before on the podcast, but it was a, uh, for like key art so like movie posters and all that oh, nice. nice and uh we would work on a few disney projects and every time it was a disney project it was like super locked down also we had separate like access badges any any like drafts that got printed had to be shredded in like a specific oh, wow. shredder yeah. and all that it was like they acted like we had you know like codes for like a missile <laughs> or something super highly classified material yeah yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Did you enjoy it? Or was it a bit kind of stressful, a bit pressurized? I enjoyed it, but you know, the all I'll say is the best part about for me that I've had working with those brands, the best part is just kind of either the pay or being able to say that i wouldn't say that they're necessarily the easiest like yeah clients yeah. <laughs> to work with you know it can no, get no. it's like yeah. you said there's like too many cooks in the kitchen you know everyone that's has it. their own opinion on everything yeah that's exactly it that is the phrase it's perfect <laughs> yeah what what uh what's kind of like i guess what out of these big like i guess whatever you want to call them fortune 500 companies mm. like what do you think's the best one that you've worked with like the entire kind of experience um oh that's tough it could be um it could well be the disney one mm -hmm. because that was my to me that was my first kind of breakout massive job like that was yeah. like full-on exposure to You're stoked, how, huh? yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah full-on exposure to how it would be like freelancing and, and doing it full-time because at the time i was still working at an agency full-time um so I was kind of doing the Disney stickers in the evening and working my nine to five with the agency. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think I think that was that was pretty big, and it was good to to kind of go on these calls with um, the art directors and the guys in the agency just to get a feeling of how it works and what it's like. Because at the time I hadn't done, I don't think I did any calls with Giphy. It was all email, so these yeah. were like my first major sort of international kind of calls and video chats. Um, so it was, it was kind of like really good exposure, not in just terms of the project, but just the process, the mm -hmm. process of working with people like overseas and just an, a sort of like a, uh, an opening in into like agency life, different agencies yeah. and how it is on the freelance side and not on the internal side, which is where I'd been. It was quite nice to experience that. And did that, that probably gave you a lot of confidence too in, in like your abilities to actually make the money each month as a freelancer right once you start landing those big jobs yeah 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 that was a, a massive like boost to like maybe i actually could do this because i'm not going out there looking for work and if people mm -hmm. are coming to me now if i do this full time and i actually put the effort in to try and find work as well then you know that could be a whole a whole other thing yeah it could definitely work i'm always curious because there's like so many different channels and everyone i know has a different kind of like winner in this uh question but how do you get approached the most is it through like instagram or email or your website it's um it's mainly through behance for me oh really um, yeah i've had i've had mm, i've had a few jobs through instagram and i had one at the start of the year which um it was for it was working with widening kennedy in, in okay. the uk in their london branch um and it was working on a project with them and that went from uh it went from like a one quick like dm with with one of the guys there um and the project started at the end of march and ran through till mid-june and that was okay. just from one instagram message um but mainly yeah it's it's from behance because everything client base if i do like a client project then i'll sort of make a case study and put that up on behance yeah and then um, it's kind of the same with like these random stickers that I do. Like every month I'll do like a roundup of this is the kind of random shit that I've made and just, just literally put them in yeah. a project. No like sort of descriptions, just one after another. And I post that up every month. Um, mm -hmm. And then it really helps when they get featured or like curated into Behance's best of galleries. Yeah, because then, you definitely. know, people see them straight away and that's when the kind of the inquiries start to fly in and it's, yeah, but it's mainly you'll get like those little medals massive. or whatever, right? It'll yeah. be like, you know, featured yeah, yeah. in typography or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So these people are seeing it. As soon as they got on Behance, they're seeing it. And it's just like, yeah, let's work with him. And that's where the inquiries come in, which has been great. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I feel like Behance is one of those ones where it can have so much potential like that. But I think it's the one of the harder things to like break into. Like if your thing's yeah. not going like getting a lot of the appreciations like early on, it seems like they can kind of die out quickly and never like fully, you know, like blow up in their little algorithm or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. If you don't have the views and you don't get featured, then it's, it is, yeah. It just, no one sees it. It's, that's why I found when I first started using it and it's only since I was doing this, this letter mm -hmm. in this typography that it started to, to grow a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been really good. And I've, I've tried other things like I've, I've been on dribble for years now but the jobs through Dribble have always been um, not really 
uh, kind of like false jobs. They've not been like great. I found like quite a few mm. spammy kind of jobs on there, which yeah. is a shame, but um, I don't use it that regularly. I just try and schedule loads of posts like every month and then just leave it and don't really track it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, because at a time when I first started kind of getting into like illustration and I heard about Dribble, it was just like, I, I need to be like um, like these these main guys on Dribble, like Rogi right. and uh, Justin Mazel and people like that. And like, there's all these designers where it was just like, they're like the standard. So if I can start uploading my own style and trying to find style, then Dribble might be the place to go. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, it's just kind of sort of drifted off the last few years. I don't really use it too much now. Yeah, I remember Dribble. Like when I was younger in school, I was like all like really being like, "Oh, I need to get an invite," you know, get on yeah, Dribble. Yeah. And I finally did. And then I feel like by the time then, it was like it kind of had died off a little bit. You know, I wasn't really sure if it <laughs> yeah. was even a place that I should be posting everything. And then with yeah. Behance, I feel like a lot of people are scared to post on Behance sometimes rather than like Instagram or Twitter because it feels so legit. You know, it feels like it has to be an entire case study or like some mm. crazy you know, huge client project or else it won't even like matter. Cause everything on there's, um, everything on there's like very aspirational in that way. If you look through all the featured stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like I have seen, you know, the odd sort of piece of digital art, which is just one image on a pro on a, like a, a project and that's mm -hmm. been curated. Um, so I don't know, I guess it's, it may, maybe it's down to the different curators for the different channels on Behance. Cause you know, I can imagine how many projects they get uploaded straight away yeah um, and like you say if you don't have the views already or the followers on it then it's really hard for it to probably be noticed mm -hmm. it's i don't know how how you'd go about getting something noticed if you're just starting out on there it's it's tricky i think you have yeah. to really stick with it i think the kind of collections thing is like a good idea that you were talking about you know if you if you don't have this big project you could just do like a series, you know, and then put yeah, all yeah. 20 of them on the one project. I see a lot of people do that with um, like logos that weren't necessarily like an entire brand identity, but it'll yeah. be like logo collection volume one or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it is good. It's a good way to do it. Especially like you say, if you don't have anything to back up one single piece, then just, you know, combine it with some other stuff if it's relevant and if it's in the same sort of category and, you, you know, it could fly. You just, you just don't know. You just got to do it. Give it a go. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about, I saw, I was reading, I think it was uh, one of your interviews. It was like a written one uh, on off your website. And they were mm. talking about you uh, submitted like the comic thing to a Futurama like contest. And I was curious, I what, like, what was it? What, why do you think it won? Was it like a storyline? It was, I, I might have it here somewhere. Um, I used to have it on my desk. It was basically like a, uh, a, a cover contest for mm -hmm. um, the standard future armor and like Simpsons comic covers. Um, and it was just like a, an illustrated cover of um, future armor. I've got to get it, here it is. So I've got it on my desk. So this is the comic from, uh, when's this from? 2005. And nice. I did, they ran this massive contest of um basically like cover art so like all these kids kind of submitted their art oh yeah um and i submitted i submitted this never think anything of it when i was younger oh yeah um, that's dope though and just you like, like 10 doing that yeah <laughs> yeah that's cool yeah yeah so i was massively into it like now I look at it that you know there's no background it's pretty stark um but I won this little robot thing. And again, there it is. Still yeah, you got to have to that still. I would definitely <laughs> yeah, be yeah. on that. It's I think nuts. maybe that's probably one of the reasons that you did win uh, that is that it was like different. You know, you left the, the blank white space and stuff. And yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was great. And that, I think like you say, you probably read that, that kind of moment of winning something or being recognized for mm -hmm. like being creative outside of like school or anything like that was just like it was it was like a really good feeling it was kind of like a passion that helped kind of fuel with the rest of my education in a way it was it was amazing yeah it's crazy too like that's obviously like a very big example of something like that but there's so many things i think when you're like a child that can happen that if they didn't happen your entire like trajectory of your life would be completely different i'm sure you would yeah, be yeah. a lot more like i'm sure that gave you like a really big confidence boost you know 
Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. And I, I do think the same if there was like, you know, I used to be massively into like films and like VHS films that I'd tape off of like the TV. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't get into kind of any of that, then, you know, would I even have ever had like any interest in motion? Like, because I still have all these like kind of old reference points in my head of old shows and TV mm-hmm. shows and things from my childhood that like are really like prolific in my mind. And it's just like, there's definitely some sort of memory there as to things that I loved doing through like moving, moving image and type and stuff. So it's kind of like something that could have started really early on, but if I hadn't watched these cool films, then, you know, yeah. it would have ever happened. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like your style would, would aid well to like creating some kind of, you know, intro sequence to like a cartoon or something. That'd be awesome with all the people's names and everything. Yeah. That, that's, that's uh, definitely like a dream job or like, um, like a, a film intro sequence kind mm-hmm. of anything like that or like a logo reveal with if, if it's kind of right so um yeah that that'd totally be up my street i'd be overjoyed to do something like that it'd be amazing yeah yeah like it's crazy i remember learning about that stuff when i can at a uh, university with uh mm. it's like saul bass was like one of the first yeah, people yeah. to do that and before it was just like they just have the movie on like a black screen and they just say like <laughs> yeah you know, to kill a mockingbird or whatever. And the movie would just start. There was no cool intros before that. And it's crazy to think yeah. that there was a time before that. Cause those are so like, those are so important now. I feel like people could, it captures your attention. And you know, if it's super like whack intro, you may, you, you could go as far as maybe not even watching the movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it does. It kind of sets the tone for the whole, the whole program or like the film. Like I got mass a few years ago, I got massively into, um, the way like Netflix own shows did their intro sequences, like mm. for random shows, even things like the, the crown about the, um, the Royal family here in the UK, yeah. like the way these like sort of title sequences worked and like the style and the design that went into them. Yeah. That I was massively into that. And I guess like all of that probably did come from, you know, just from one guy all those years ago, just getting into, into the start of these films. It's mental, yeah. but it's amazing. I really like the ones that have like, where it'll be like the credits and stuff, but it's integrated into like a real life thing. Like uh, one of my favorites is, have you seen Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, you know, they have like the tray with like the corn dog. It'll have someone's name written on <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. And like script. And like, that's it's just, amazing. I feel like such a creative way to do it. Yeah, 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 it, it's great. I love I love stuff like that. It's just perfect. Yeah. Um. So like we were talking a little bit about, you know, you getting that, confidence boost like when you're a kid and probably helped you like want to pursue this but I I talked to a lot of different people and I was curious like if you ever get like a lot of like self-doubt or like imposter syndrome and when you do how do you kind of combat that and deal with that on like a day-to-day basis yeah so I've I've I found that a lot like a lot of the times when kind of these brands have come to me and it's kind of I've started the project but then things that they've asked for straight straight away just like proposed in my head it's just like there's no way I can do that even if it's something that I can definitely probably do it's just like oh there's no way I can do that um so yeah I've 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 tried to battle it a few different ways before I've tried to like go out and clear my head and just get some fresh air and for me most of the time if I don't get straight onto something or if if I dwell on something for too long or leave it for too long then it just makes it worse so Mm. I just try and kind of get straight back into it and and just (sighs) kind of look at look at where things have have come from or how far things have come for myself and just you know just try and re-motivate myself at like you know you've you've done stuff like this before or even if I hadn't yeah. it was just like they're obviously coming to you for a reason you know they, mm-hmm. they like your stance on design and how you can bring something different to the table so um I think like self-hyping like be your own hype man and just mm-hmm. like you know build yourself up is is definitely a way it's, it's it is hard though because it's it is very imposing sometimes and it really can like affect your kind of performance when you're creating new stuff and getting into it so um it's hard i've it's i think everyone's everybody's probably different but yeah i i just have to kind of get straight back into it and just don't dwell on it for too long because it just lingers and it, it manifests in my head as, as yeah. something that it becomes more negative and it's just like I'd start to not want to do the job if I leave it for too long, which is Yeah, like you, you want terrible. to take a break, but if, you, if the break's too long, you're like completely over it, you know? You don't even want to yeah, get yeah. back into the project. Yeah, definitely. That's that's the problem I find. 
I think it's good though too for people to hear because especially like someone like you like if you're working with these huge clients you know and you still like run into those issues like it just shows that it's kind of I'm not inevitable, but like a very common thing for that most like creatives, whether you're a designer, whatever you may be doing. Like, I think having that feeling of like maybe imposter syndrome or like doubt is, is in, in a way it's a good thing, you know, because if you're completely content, then you may not grow. You know, you may think like, oh, I'm already the best I can be or I'm already where I'm yeah, supposed yeah. to be at. And it's easy yeah. to get like intimidated. But I think if you just, like you were saying, uh, look at it like oh i if i looked at myself you know like a few years ago here now i'd be like super grateful you know yeah yeah it's it does it does help to sort of reflect on you know where you've come from and, and what you've done um but yeah it, it, it's hard it's it's something i think everyone does battle with and like i said like even now i, I get briefs and it's just like i start doing it and it's just like oh it's nothing's working like i just like i'm not gonna be able to do this and it's just mm -hmm. like just got to have to get a grip sometimes and just just focus or take like like you said just a quick break and you know clear your head and get back to it but yeah it happens to the to everybody it's it's very common it, when you first start on a like a motion project and you're creating like let's say like some kind of custom type or whatever mm. like the animation is going to end up being do you uh do you, where do you start in terms of like the process from from beginning to like once you're actually into the timeline and everything? Yeah, so sometimes I've done um, like a load of style frames. So for a few agencies, uh, when they've come to me with like you know they if they they had like a, a specific word for an opening sequence or like the start of like a a short film for something. Um, yeah. Then it's kind of like if you can send us a load of style frames of that word, just static style frames of how this would look and I always add a few motion notes underneath something. So mm -hmm. it would just be like a really short description as to how something's going to animate. Um, so yes, it depends, kind of just depend on what it is. Sometimes it's style frames. And then other times I've had mood boards where it is just one style and it's just like, well, the style is kind of already set, but I'm still going to do static designs for clients yeah. to sign off because I've had it before where I've done, They've, they've said just just go for it and just create something cool and i've done that i've i've created you know something without them checking it before it's been animated and they've not they've hated it and it's just like uh, yeah. if you just <laughs> signed it off in the first place we would not be having this discussion but yeah it's it's hard everybody every client's different but i think you need i need the static stuff to be signed off before mm -hmm. i'm even going to animate anything i'm not going to waste my time making something move because a lot of the time when I'm working, I'm sort of um, making things into shape layers. So there's no sort of updatable links like there is for right. like JPEGs and stuff, you know. There's no going back once I've started doing something sometimes. So it's kind of like you, you need to sign off the shape of this or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. then I can start animating because it's a nightmare if you have yeah. to. <laughs> I can already imagine all the clients telling you like, can we change the word, you know, to like a whole oh, different word? I've had it's it. Like, I've had it. Oh. It's, it's horrible. It's the worst. It's, it's a sickening feeling. And it's just yeah. like, oh, I've, I've spent like half a day doing that, that sort of word animation. And they think it's just a, just type in a place. Yeah. Like you know, live we'll just, text. <laughs> yeah. Even, even some agencies, they think it's just like, yeah, we'll just re retype the word and you can animate it the same way. And it's just like, oh, it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. Yeah. I've done stuff like that where even if it's in, in like Illustrator, or Photoshop, and I, whatever I may do, you know, I, I make it into a shape or I rasterize something and I, cause I'm yeah. like, there's no way this specific part's cha gonna change. So let's just yeah, like yeah. clean up this file. And then they're like, what do you think about that little like <laughs> word in the corner? Like, can we change that? And I'm like, oh no, it's already <laughs> like, it's, it's worked, we're in too deep, you know? Oh man, just gotta make everything smart objects, make everything bloody yeah. relinkable. Oh, it, just it can be such a pain you got to cover that cover your back cover your tracks yeah i've learned that like definitely it's like one of those things where it feels like you you learn it all the time and i still like make you the same mistakes <laughs> yeah 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 do you, so done. when you, you'll do basically then like in an illustrator let's say like yeah. a kind of like a storyboard pretty much mm. right yeah yeah so for some things where it's like an animated sticker where it's, it's literally going to be like seconds long like four seconds i try to do um 
like a, a, a storyboard that's got three frames on. So like a start, middle and end. Mm-hmm. So that's how it's going to look at the start. That's how it's going to look when it's animating. Um, and that's going to look how it's kind of animating out if it's going to or what the sort of end frame is going to be. Right. Um, and that's kind of worked for me really well for clients because it's it's clear for them to see what they're going to get. And I'll, like I said, I'll write some motion notes with that so then they know exactly it it is going to animate how it looks in the mm-hmm. sort of middle frame. So they know what to expect and it's just less hazardous for for me trying to sort of reanimate things when they've signed things off. Like I said, it's, it's much yeah. easier to do it that way for me. Have you ever found that like, you know, those three frames aren't enough for like the client to understand what's actually going like, to yeah, happen. I've, I've had to do like, um, 16 frames, I think on something before, literally every single step for something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I could have just, I should have just animated it and just mm-hmm. been like, this is, this is how it is because I've created all the frames, you know, most of the stuff I do is on like 12 frames anyway. So it was like, yeah, I've already done the frames and I've spent, way too long like giving you these frame ideas and yeah they probably just chuck them into photoshop anyway and sequence them so they could see how it was going to animate how it was going to move by putting the frames on top of each other right so it's it's just like i should just animated it but yeah sometimes i have had to do six frames sometimes 16 at the very rarity um it does vary but yeah sometimes three three is not enough to get the idea sometimes it's at least four to six just to be super clear yeah this is what you're gonna get if you say yes yeah. And it's honestly so important. I'm glad you mentioned like, you know, getting that concept approved before you spend mm-hmm. all the like production time, because like, you know, a, a simple like discovery call or whatever you want to call it can turn like, you know, five hours of work into like five minutes. Cause yeah. you, you could have been doing the wrong thing all along. And then it's like, yeah. you're, you're climbing up a, like a huge ladder, but it's up against the wrong wall, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's super important. It really is. Yeah, I, I used to just like, I almost always do like an in-depth call, even if it's like, even if I have to waste my own time, that's like not build or whatever it may be. Yeah. That's going to like, I'm always going to regret it if like, it's just email communication and there's like some, there's always like some little barrier that, that you may not be like fully on the same page, you know? Yeah. At least then if you've got it, you know, you've heard it vocally and you've seen it on like a video call and you've got an email, then you're kind of fully covered if they try and sort of backtrack and, you know, run you in circles. Yeah. Definitely helpful. Do you do, um, like most of your, all your work's just done from the room you're in pretty much like your little home office. Yeah. 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 Um, I've got my, uh, sort of little MacBook as well, which I use. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's just some of the stuff that I do now doesn't quite, it just overheats instantly. So yeah, yeah. I'm on the, the iMac now, which is, is running well, but yeah, I'm normally just in this room which is decent. It's a nice little setup. Yeah. I have my older MacBook. I have, uh, my desktop is like a PC now. I've been recently yeah. like the past few years converted, but I find it now that like, I'm so spoiled of the, like the performance in my, in my desktop that sometimes I want to go work like at a, you know, at a cafe or something. And the Mac is just like, <laughs> it's like just making all these noises yeah. and stuff. And it, it doesn't cut it. I can't yeah. handle it anymore. Yeah. It struggles so much. It just gets so hot. Like I used to, I used to be accustomed to just waiting, you know, with the little spinny circle. Like <laughs> yeah. that, I thought that was just part of it. Like, oh, big files, you know, that's just how it is. No. And as soon as you get a good computer, you realize how easy things can be. Yeah. How, and how it's, much less it's hard to go time. back. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I don't, I don't try to use the laptop a lot because it's, it's just too, yeah, it's not, it's not easy. It just slows everything down. It's yeah. Not an easy thing. I like to just, the, the, the main reason I was, I'm always like, trying to work on it sometimes is I like to especially with lockdown I I feel sometimes like you know I can start to not be as creative when I'm in the same the same room and yeah, yeah. I always feel like I need to go outside or something and what kind of stuff does like inspires you like outside of like maybe the design world so I um I live quite close to quite kind of like a quite rural area so there's loads of like kind of fields mm-hmm. um and originally in lockdown, we were kind of just like walking, walking around the sort of fields and the areas really just to kind of get some air and sort of refresh. But um, now I've kind of got a dog that's really helped oh, yeah. me break out of this space and just get out for an hour and go for a walk and um, just 
just try and get some downtime because um, I feel like because I'm on my phone all the time, um, I've got all these kind of sort of design books next to me that um, how things currently are that I get enough inspiration for what I need to do just from within this room and on my phone and everything like mm-hmm. that. So being able to take myself away from the screens and all these images really helps just, you know, the downtime because downtime is something I really struggled with for a while. It was not being able to switch off because I just, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd work on freelance projects in the morning before work, back when I was full time and then do the day job and then do the evening. And it was yeah. just like bur- burning out and like, I'd start to make more creative blocks. So it was, it was tough, but um, now I've so- sort of got more of a balance. It's, it's easier. And yeah, I find like getting away from sort of the really creative stuff is helping me more to sort of, refresh and recharge definitely yeah and i found when lockdown was like i I don't know it's hard to say because la is like kind of reversing and we're going Mm. back but when it was in its like peak or whatever you want to call it uh i found it hard to separate like just work from like i had i found it hard to give myself boundaries like if i was at home my mind started to think like well you might as well just work you know like you're not doing anything so like just work on stuff and i'd work like way later than I wanted to and then it'd be time for me to go to sleep and I'd be all mad at myself because I didn't give myself time to relax you know yeah yeah there was no like disconnect from just working it was just constant um especially at the time at the start of lockdown I was I would have been commuting normally as well so it would have right. been like I wouldn't even if I'd done some client work before work I still would have then had half an hour to you know refresh just mm-hmm. cycle to work which is what I used to do um and then when that was taken away, it was just like, okay, I'll do, I'll do an hour of client work, then have a break and then do my day job. But it was always like, I'd literally have like 20 minutes left to have breakfast and then get ready to sit back in front of the computer and do my yeah. day job. Um, it was hard. It was really hard finding that, the separation. Mm-hmm. Really hard. I, I, I would never, you know choose going back to like i hated commuting you know especially out here there was times where it would just be like hours of your day wasted you know however when i did get home from you know the office there was like i wasn't working again you know i actually gave myself the permission to be like you're done for the day but working from home only you don't know when like you're like should i stick on you know the the hours that like the corporate world's on. And then sometimes I'll say like, Oh no, like I work better at night, but I already worked yeah. in the morning too. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. doing double. Ex- exactly the same. Yeah. I always think I can work better at night, but it's just, just burns you out. Yeah. I saw this uh, meme the other day. It was like that, like old guy that looks like kind of creepy with the smile. And it said like, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm not about that nine to five life. Like now I work 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the exact same one. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I shared it because it was just so spot on. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like a lot it's of bad. people, I think since I went freelance, they, they like not, not, not like, you know, with the ill intention, but they're probably like, oh, you're probably chilling now, huh? Like you have yeah, so yeah. much time. And I'm like, I don't know. I think I work more honestly <laughs> at this point. Yeah. I know. I, it's the same here. People do think like, yeah, you must have so much more free time now to just, you know, just be your own boss, do what you want in the day. And it's just like, no it's I do even more work I'm always on my emails now I'm always doing mm-hmm. something to do with work because you gotta constant. do all the admin shit too, yeah yeah. You know? yeah all of that side comes to it comes with it and it's just like people don't think about that <laughs> you can easily like waste a whole day just trying to like reply to emails and and like sort out your calendar I swear like <laughs> yeah just keeping on top of admin is a job on its own yeah. yeah I think you know eventually it'd be cool to hopefully get the amount of income to justify having someone to like hire even uh, yeah to deal with all that stuff because it gets like yeah i also have a hard time though like giving away um like tasks like i think i need to do everything you know yeah i'd I'd, I'd if i had like an intern i'd definitely struggle with that and i think i'd spend more time being concerned about how they're getting on and what they're creating and not being able to focus on my own stuff. Yeah. I don't think it'd work. And they just get mad at you because you're always like <laughs> bothering them, you know? Yeah, you're that typical art director hanging over the shoulder of somebody. Yeah. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you, so it seems like I've seen a lot of your style like inspire people, not only in posts, but I've seen people mm. make like videos like kind of showing how to do what you do saying that they were inspired by by your posts Mm. and 
I was curious if you ever thought about doing like a YouTube channel or like a Skillshare or anything like that. Uh, I have thought about it and I have got, um, do you know Domestica? Oh yeah. The sort of, I've got a course coming out with them in like the oh, next cool. few weeks, which I filmed um, a couple of months ago. I went down to London and filmed it. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like I'm. that's going to be my only tutorial um, because it's, it's, it's difficult. I've had this conversation with quite a few people. As much as I love seeing people doing my style of animation, there's, there's definitely a limit to, there's a barrier and there's a line I think some people cross where they start then creating things exactly the same way as I do. Mm. Like it's, it's down to the very art style and it's, it's, it's just too similar to mine. I understand people are learning and they're exploring, but if you just start copying everything I'm doing and really like copying my same style in the same yeah. animation way, I, I just don't think you're going to get anywhere. You're not going to grow as a designer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what's made me a bit more hesitant to do more tutorials on all the type styles because it's something that I've spent ages learning and I don't want, I want people to still be coming to me, like mm -hmm. agencies and brands to be coming to me for that kind of thing. I don't want to give all these secrets and tips away and, you know, for other people to get the jobs that I I could get it's right. it's 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 a battle of two halves for me um because this domestica course is kind of one of mine sort of well-known styles it's not like something that i've shared very often so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see how that affects things um it's not necessarily something i get asked to do a lot of but it's it's a, it's a technique that filters into a lot of my work so um i am excited to see and for it to come out and see how people sort of take it on and sort of experiment with it because in the course it's all about um you know exploring your own style and not just copying exactly That's how good. i've done it but twisting it to your own design style and strategy um so yeah i, I i'm looking forward to that coming out but um at the minute i i don't i don't have time to do mm -hmm. youtube channels and tutorials and it's just not in my remit at the minute but um, That's fair. yeah i'll see uh, maybe one day but I'm not going to give too many secrets away, not just yet. And I feel like there's a fine line between like, so I've over the past maybe five to 10 years, I've noticed when I first started, it was very much everyone had this secret, like no one shared anything. It was very like yeah. gate, gate kept. And then I think now we're leaning towards a territory where it's becoming like too far. Like people think you're an asshole just for not wanting to give them every single thing you know how to do. And I think yeah. it's just one of those things where we have to bring it all the way to the extreme to kind of bring it back to like a good balanced point, you know? Yeah, it definitely. And I, I, I get that people who are learning probably don't understand like why people don't want to sort of share everything that they've mm -hmm. sort of learned. But I think people need to remember that some of these things are, um, there are careers, they're things that we've spent right. like years, years creating and years learning and sort of tailoring. So we're not going to just give it away at the drop of a hat. And it's, it's not something that people are willing to let go of. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. And I get, I get people probably get frustrated that why don't you just tell people how you do something? Because it's, well, that's kind of like my career. It's my job. I don't want to tell you how to do it exactly the same way, because then you're mm -hmm. going to get approached by clients. If you, you know, do it a, diff a certain different style or a different way. It's, it's yeah. hard. And then when they'll be like, we have Matt voice at home, you know, and it's like the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. poor man's version. I feel like yeah. uh, the more you establish yourself, though, the more um, that fear probably can subside because it doesn't matter if someone can almost do it identical. Like, I think once you get to a point, people literally just want you as the individual, you know, to work with them rather yeah. than like uh, the style. You know, if, if someone's coming to you for a thing anyone can do then it's probably not going to be a good relationship all the way to the end because they're just coming for that you know they don't want you they want you know this one little thing that you may know how to do yeah it's, it's a really good way of looking at it it's something i've never really i've never look, looked at it that way so that's yeah that's interesting it's really good to kind of hear that and that is a, a great way to sort of think about it and to rationalize it as well that is it is probably more about how you as a designer or creative 
tackle something, not necessarily in just one style, but yeah, mm-hmm. they're coming to you for you, not for your style. It's for your your approach, which is quite nice. Yeah, and it's Definitely. good to hear that, you know, even in this course that you're going to put out, you know, I think it's a very good idea to put that emphasis on, you know, like uh, taking this and then using it for others rather than like, Mm. like whenever I follow a tutorial, I almost always try to do like, just watch it, but do my own like version. Usually it, sometimes I run into issues because I didn't like copy them exactly. And then now (laughs) it's like the, the word doesn't work that their word they chose or whatever it may be. But I think that's better because then at the end of the day, even if you mess up or change some things on the way, your final product is different enough from yeah. whatever everyone else copied, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's definitely how you, how I feel like you you learn and you develop as a designer. Even if you, like you say, if you sway away from the tutorial, that is how you you make these happy accidents and you find mm-hmm. you find your feet. It's, it's, I think it's the best way to do it but rather than carbon copy and like a a tutorial and coming out with the exact same thing and like you know it's good to explore that way to do it yeah yeah i was uh oh another thing i was curious is i was looking on your website and it said uh you had like the management with like paco i think it was Mm. called or whatever yeah yeah and i was curious like how is that experience with like having like representation or whatever you want to call it as a creative Do do you like that yeah so i was always a bit skeptical about how things would go and not necessarily just with Paco. I've been approached by other agencies before, like, yeah. um, but the only, the main thing that swayed me was um, I'd known about Paco for quite a few years and loads of the artists they have on their roster are people that I followed on Instagram for a while. So Mm. straight away, it was just like, I mean, I'd love to be on the same sort of level as these guys and be available like they are for jobs that Paco are getting in and the sort of connections they have. Um, So yeah, it was, it was great, and it, especially because, funnily enough, I f- probably ten percent of my work comes from the UK. I get hardly any work from like the UK or Europe. It's yeah. a lot. A lot of it's American based, um, or like some in Canada and some in Australia. So um, the UK and Europe wasn't really covered. And I, I said to the, the team at Poco that I didn't want to be repped in America because. I deal with all that stuff by myself and Mm. I have quite a few briefs coming in. I don't really want to, I don't want anyone else to get involved in that because it's been going great so far. So I'm more than happy to be repped in, you know, my home territory and in Europe. That's, that's great. If you get me more work, then that's perfect. And that's, that's exactly how it's been going. And they've, they've been great. It's, it's, it's gone really well. And, you know, they've, they've already had quite a few great projects in for me and things that are kind of in the works. So um, it's been really positive. It's been a really good experience, and they're they're a nice little team to work with. And you know, they they sort of really understand how creatives work and mm-hmm. how to deal with these different clients and these different connections. Which is it's been a godsend, really. I'm sure they deal with like some of the you know, yeah, managerial know bullshit too that yeah. you don't really yeah. want to do. Yeah, yeah, they have to deal with with like you know when you have to turn down projects or dealing with like budgets and things like that. There, that's awesome. They're all, o- they're all over that, so it, it it really just take the pressure off that that part of a project, this sort of planning and budgeting and scheduling. That's all under them. It's great because if you, some of that stuff, you know, it can get so frustrating that it like I don't think it could ever completely deter me but if I wasn't as confident in like this career path like some of those situations I've had like it could just make you not even want to deal with it anymore you know yeah it can put you off completely it really can that's why I think there was such a bigger emphasis we've been seeing online with like more designers pursuing like a path that's more like I would just say like art you know like they're more just making a living off of selling like prints or nfts or things like that because there's so many like client horror stories they were probably like i don't even want to a lot of younger people probably think i don't even want to deal with that or whatever it may be yeah yeah and if you can if you can make a good living off of like nfts or digital art or anything like that then why would you ever go back to client work it's kind of like a no no brainer have you uh one of the last things i wanted to ask you is kind of have you liked I guess, working on your own far more than the agency or do you still ever want to like go back into that world? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm very much sort of like an introvert. So I'm more than happy to be by myself, have my own company and just, I don't need to be surrounded by people to be able Mm -hmm. to 
enjoy my day to day. Like I don't feed off of loads of different people around myself. I'd rather just I agree. be be by myself and, you know, concentrate and, and just do my own thing. Um, but I do, there is days where I do miss working with the team that I worked at my last job at Analog here in Leeds because they were just like, just the it people. was like, yeah, it was just like yeah. working with a bunch of mates. It was, it wasn't, they, they made it, it, it didn't feel like a day job with them. Mm. It was just, it, it was just great fun. And it was just like, I didn't dread going into work or think, oh, it's, it's Monday tomorrow. I've got to go to work. It was just like, it was exciting. And yeah, it was just sitting next to a desk next to one of your mates. It was, it was perfect. So, um, there is days where I do miss that massively, especially if I'm having like a, a down day where I'm not getting onto a project or, yeah. you know, there's just a bit of negativity in the day. It's just like, there's no one here to, to, you know, to feed off of or even to talk to. So mm-hmm. sometimes it can be, it can be hard, but, um, 90% of the time I do enjoy just being by myself, just doing my own thing. That's all I'm about really. You must have been like pretty confident then and like stoked to start freelancing because most people, the situation they leave, they're like, finally, you know, I got to quit my job or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was really hard because I loved working there, but the this was probably I don't know when this was. This was like eight, nine months after I did the work for Disney. So in that time I'd been the jobs had been building. Um mm-hmm. and the freelance work was starting to take over my day job. And I was having to turn down projects that I really didn't want to have to turn down. Yeah. So I had to just do it, just make the leap, which is, mm-hmm. it is I'm sure as you know, it's, it's, it is scary. It's a scary sure. thought. When I first did um, it, I was like, um, the, the one of the deciding factors for me is I put my mindset as, I'm not going to think like, oh, I might fail, but I thought, you know, it's not like I can never get another job if I have to or if I want yeah. to, you know, if anything yeah. terrible happens, I can just go and apply to a position like besides COVID it, for me, like I feel like I've had decent luck with finding like mm. salaried jobs and things like that. So with yeah. having that in the in the back of my mind and like a little bit of a savings, it was kind of like feels like a like a perfect time to do it, especially with age and everything like that. Yeah, definitely. You need those sort of factors do add up and it does sway the balance as to what you're going to do, which is really helpful. Makes it easier yeah. to decide and focus on it. Yep, for sure. Um, anything else exciting you have coming up or working on? Um, some things I just can't say. NDAs yeah. and Secrets. I just... Yeah, I'm not allowed to say. Um, but the main, I guess the main thing is that domestic course at the minute. Mm-hmm. That was you know something that's been in the works for a while or so. Um, it's it's it'll be exciting to get that out there and just it's in a few weeks you said yeah I think the trailer is coming out next week um, and then yeah okay it, I think the actual course it will might be out, be out in, then by the time this weeks. comes out so if it's out you guys can go check that out I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll link it below yeah. if it's out yeah nice one it probably will be yeah so um so yeah and then just see what else comes in um mm-hmm. I'm just I'm lined up to do some more stuff for um, UEFA again who did the Euros oh, nice. football stickers so. Something could be kicking off there again with some more stickers for their contests like Champions League. So nice. we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait and see. It's um, it could be good, and hopefully some downtime, maybe a week away from the computer, which I'm yeah. looking forward to. Yeah, and I saw that that LA Times thing you did was badass. I remember seeing that. Yeah, like yeah, go hiking in LA. That was that was ace. Such a good project to do. I've always yeah. wanted to do do a cover, and again, you know, it's here on the desk. It's just great. Yeah. It's good to have it. You got to celebrate tough. those little wins, you know, keep the you, trophy you right have. there. It, it is all about the little wins. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So where can, definitely. uh, where are all your other like places people can find you? Um, so yeah, I'm on Behance, which is, like I say, it's, it's got a lot of my Instagram stuff, just more mm-hmm. sort of collected into projects. Um, Instagram's my main sort of go to, and it's where I kind of chat to a lot of people and you know, where yeah. things like this kick off and like chatting to you. And so. It's just mad voice, right? Yep, yep, okay. one T. With one T. And, yeah, yes. and V-O-Y-C-E, not I. Um, and then, yeah, I'm on, on, I'm on like dribbling things like that, but mm-hmm. I just go to Instagram. If you want to talk to me, just hit me on Instagram. It's the best place for me to see it as well. Dope. And if you want to hear a little bit more, we're going to head over to the Patreon and do that little Q&A. But other than that, I really appreciate you coming on, man. It was great talking to you. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Great fun. All right. Peace out, everyone. Nice one. Cheers, man.